Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? You stand with me as we sing our call to worship. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Two times. What a, what a joy it is to be with you and uh, to worship with you today and uh, just to simply report we've had a blessed week in the Lord and we're so grateful for that and all that God has done and, and I don't know about you, my heart's just kind of full with, with uh, all the things that God has, has allowed me to see and to be a party to this week and so I hope and pray no matter what you've been through and where you've been or what you may anticipate uh, in the week to come, that in these next few moments you'll have opportunity to be still, to hear from heaven, and to know the joy of the Lord that He loves you, that He's with you, that you're His, and that He is yours. Again, I want to welcome you today to Pleasant Hill and all friends and family and our guests, those worshiping with us also uh, online. We want you to know we're praying for you. We love you. We're glad you're here. do have some things that we want to uh, bring your attention to in your program this morning. Just a couple of items in particular. One, the gals of grace that are meeting today, that's actually going to be at 3 p.m. instead of 2 p.m. So if you get here at 2 p.m., you'll be very much on time and prepared. But you might be alone for just a little bit. So 3 p.m., please make that note. Uh, that was updated this morning. Uh, the Gals of Grace meeting today at 3 p.m. for coffee and snacks at the Lovelace's um, Pavilion. And so, again, uh, if you have any questions, just contact Miss Dee Dee. See one of our ladies. They'll help you out with that. Also, um, uh, there will be more information up and coming about the ladies' trip to the Frog Toe Family Farm. So, again, that'll be up and coming as well. Uh, students, and if you have a student, one of our, uh, one of our students, teen, uh, one of our teens, they are invited to come to or attend Come to the River. It's going to be a free concert at Pickwick on Saturday, September the 28th. If you have a student that wants to be or would like to go and to attend, uh, please uh, either contact uh, Hunter or Jessica, you can contact Hunter at uh, uh, Hunter at ph.church or you can contact the church office um, directly and let them know so they'll have a number. Make sure they have enough seats. But they will be leaving uh, right in this parking lot in between the buildings at 1.30. And so I think he may come and share just a thing or two as well. So Hunter will inv invite you to make your way up. Also, um, Senior Saints. Tuesday the 17th, yes. and so need to let you know, right, so there'll, there'll be a head count, let Miss Sandra know, $10 a person, and they're going to be leaving at 8 a.m., right? As close to 8 a.m. as possible. Be here a little before 8 a.m., or at least by 8 a.m., um, if you want to go along with the group, otherwise. No later than 8.15. Okay, well don't tell them that. They'll be, they'll, they'll, oh, never mind, I'm not going to say it. $10 a person, okay. Oh, boy, I was about to, well. Hunter, why don't you come up before I get in trouble? Uh, 
All right. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Good deal. So, um, yeah. So, one of the things we are going to talk about is we do have a uh, free concert for the youth ministry that we're going to be going to. It's called Come to the River. It'll be at Pickwick on September 28th. Um, we'll be leaving here at about 1.30, um, loading up the bus and heading over that way. It's about an hour from here. Um, starts at 3 o'clock. The three artists that, are be, that will be there are actually really awesome. Um, it's uh, Micah Tyler, um, Rhett Walker, and the main, the main attraction, if you will, is Crowder. Um, he's going to be there. So it's going to be really, really good. We're really excited about it. Also wanted to share with you just some of what God has been doing in the youth ministry and actually some brand new news you don't even know about yet. Um, so today, uh, we just got through um, the fifth quarter this past Friday, had an awesome attendance. Uh, we had over 50 students show up, which was amazing. Um, we didn't know what to expect, but we were very thankful that we had as many students show up, and that's the ones that stuck around. So I think we had a little bit more than that that also came and just picked up food and um, hung out for just a minute. But uh, I also wanted to tell you that um, that night, more importantly than anything, we had three students give their life to Christ. Um, so it was a, a very wonderful thing. Um, and also, uh, and I'm glad I get to, like I said, share this news with you this morning. Um, just in Sunday school, uh, we had um, anywhere from around four to seven students raise their hand in response to the gospel this morning. So, uh, Lord's moving in this youth ministry here, and uh, we're super excited and can't wait to see. Um, we had one student that did come and talk to us afterwards, and um, we're really excited to see what the Lord's going to do in her life as well, and just among many other people. So, I encourage you, uh, if you've got kids or grandkids, get them here, and uh, if you're a kid yourself, join us, because there's a lot of awesome things that are happening in the youth ministry here. Um, so we're super excited to see what else God is going to do with the youth ministry. So. Amen. And again, our, our students are, are meeting with, uh, with Hunter and Jessica. They're meeting on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Also, they're meeting on Sundays in between the two services at, at 10 a.m. And let me tell you, uh, uh, Friday night was amazing. I mean, Hunter and Jessica did a great job. And I just want to say thank you to all of you that uh, prayed for that, that uh, either brought or helped prepare food or did some of the preparation, the cleanup, however you may have helped. Thank you so much for supporting and because uh, it wouldn't happen without the church family. So, so as these young people come to Christ, you're a part of that. And so I encourage you. Uh, however the Lord leads you, invest into their ministry and what God's doing here at Pleasant Hill uh, because kids are being won to Christ. So I'm looking forward to that, that celebration Sunday uh, where we'll, 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 get to, we'll, get to see, uh, we'll get to see and meet some of these students. And so we're, we're excited about what God is doing. And uh, um, Hunter spent his... Uh, birthday this last week preparing for our kids and all so uh, y'all make sure before you get away from here to uh, let them know how much you love and appreciate them and tell Hunter happy birthday we are blessed to have you both here and we're so grateful for you and what God is doing in and through your lives and for our church family and for this community so we're, we're just honored to walk along beside you Again, thank you for being here this morning, and a uh, lot of great things going on, uh, but the greatest of all is that we're walking together in faith. We know the Lord Jesus is here, he's with us, and by virtue of that, he's made a difference in our lives, and our lives can make a difference. What a blessing. So thank you for being here this morning. Let's take just a moment. We're going to pray together today. And uh, as we do so, uh, again, we, we do take a moment in, in this particular service and give you opportunity if there's a very special prayer need that you have to bring before the church. But I do want to remind you as we do that, uh, that we are streaming. So make sure that there's not any uh, information that needs to be um, that needs to be held in and uh, privacy that is given out during this service. If you have those things, please come and, and talk to us after service, and we'd love to pray with you. Uh, are there any particular requests this morning before we pray together? I'm sorry? 
pray for Miss Ockley as she is traveling, and uh, she's always traveling, and uh, she is such a blessing. When she's here, if you get a chance to say hi to her and meet her, amazing person. She uh, serves, serves people around the globe. She's an amazing individual. So pray for her as she goes. Okay. Okay. Or any All right, be in prayer for James and George. Any others? Yes. Yes, please do, please do. And we just remember in prayer, she has a procedure Friday, and so please, please, we're, we're so thankful for you, Miss Alice, and, and uh, what a blessing you, you are to so many in our church family, and what a blessing you are to me. So we will be remembering you this Friday in prayer. Okay. Yes. All right. Any others? Okay. Brett Stewart. Remember, remember, Kyle as he recovers and uh, everything went well. He's doing well, and he's got uh, to help him recover from that. Uh, uh, tender incision. He has two beautiful girls that are bouncing all over him. So, um, y'all, y'all remember, remember him in, in prayer, and uh, remember Emily as she has to put up with him as he recovers. So, uh, all right. And uh, Jim Goff. All right. Yes. And Lynn is doing well with his procedure, and so he's he's recovering. And but he's he's doing well. So I'll give the Lord praise for all of that. And um, but do please remember their family. All right. Also, uh, um, remember Martha Parker and uh, continue. Uh, she's uh, continuing to do well, but but uh, uh, difficult journey. Some of you know well this 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 cancer um, this cancer fight is a difficult battle. So please lift her up in prayer. All right, let's pray together this morning uh, again. What a what a wonderful opportunity we have as we come together. We know the Lord's in our midst, and we know God hears us, but there's something special when we come and agree together in the name of Christ as we lift people up before the Lord. And I remind you, as we pray together, um, look, we're family here, amen? And um, uh, if you need to come, if you feel the need to, to come and, and kneel at the altar during our prayer time and, and lift someone up or bear your own personal uh, need up, sometimes there's something about uh, just a physical act that helps us confirm our faith. And, um, and it reaffirms our faith. And so if you feel the need to come and to pray, this is a house of prayer. And unfortunately, um, most of the time we stand right here, we sit right there. Uh, but the most powerful thing we do 
is to bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord. And so this really ought to be ought to be the most prevalent piece of furniture in the room. And so if you feel the need uh, to pray as we pray together, you can just make your way quietly um, and take your moment uh, with the Lord today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we give you praise in this place for the wonderful answers of prayer that we've had this week. And Lord, our hearts are, are just rejoicing and, and, and are, are warmed, Lord, because of, of what you've done in the lives of these young people. Uh, Lord, even just in this last hour, Lord, is there are eternal decisions that are being made. And Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory. Lord Jesus, we lift up your name but because it's by faith in you alone that we're saved. You are the only way the truth and the life. And so we give you praise today for for paving the way, for going first and inviting us to come after you, to know salvation, to know sins forgiven, and to know life for all eternity. And so, Father, we lift up these young men, these young women that are that are coming to you in faith. And, Father, we pray that you would protect them. Lord Jesus, that you would help us as a congregation to, to rally together, to encourage them, to provide them what they need to grow and to mature in their faith in you. And we pray that you would give us grace and strength to be godly examples and loving brothers and sisters before them in all that we do and all that we say. Father, we lift up, uh, we lift up Hunter and Jessica and, and all the team that is working together with our young people. And we just pray your continued anointing and blessing and protection upon them. Heavenly Father, we lift up also those that have been mentioned here this morning. Lord, so many different ones with, with physical needs today. We know you're the great physician. And we recognize, Lord, that, that you are able to heal. And we pray for that in the name of Jesus. We ask for that. And we recognize that healing always comes in your time and according to your will. And so, Father, if you choose to so heal them today, we give you all the praise and the glory. And, Father, if, if, if it's your desire to, to, to heal them in eternity, Lord Jesus, we too give you the praise and the glory. And we pray that as they wait upon you, that you would give them peace of heart and mind and that you would give them strength of spirit. In every sick room that has been mentioned this morning, Father, we just pray that your presence would be overwhelming, that they would be reassured that they would know you love them, you haven't forgotten them, and that they would take comfort in you today. I invite you this morning to pray this prayer with me. It's been prayed so many times before. And as we do so together this morning, I I invite you to think about each phrase, each idea, each thought, and in your own way, make it your own. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand again with me this morning. And we're going to... uh, Uh, worship together and song again and invite you to stand with me Uh, let's go ahead it's 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 there you go good job good job good job I know I've been talking and praying too long uh, for some of us but uh, we're, we're going to sing this old song, and this is an old marching type song. It's an old, old march, literally. Uh, but as we're talking about this and singing about this song, and, and this, uh, the tune is, is an ancient tune, but as we sing this song, think about the reality of how deeply God has loved you and that we are on the move following Jesus Christ and going somewhere today. Let's sing this old song together. 416 in your hymnal.
Amen. Remain standing and we're going to take just a moment and greet one another in the Lord Jesus this morning. Find somebody you haven't spoken to this morning. Just tell them you're glad to see them and you love them in Christ. Oh my, I want to thank the uh, Miss Sandra and the choir, all of you. Uh, 
this morning for a good season of worship, and uh, I've been a while since I uh, sung and uh, and heard some of those some of those worship songs, and uh, I enjoyed that. That was really good. Thank you for reminding us um, of that. It reminded me of the passage of scripture as you were singing. Um, the Bible reminds us. It says. How then shall they call upon him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And that word preacher is literally a proclaimer. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach or proclaim the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things. You know, it's a great thing to be shod with the preparation of peace. Amen. And that's what we are as a kingdom of priests. Me, you, all of us are a kingdom of priests. And how beautiful is the coming of those who bring good news. And so may God help us this week as we go out from this place, the people that we talk to, the places that we go, um, starting at home with our own families, to be mindful that God has called us to be kingdom priests and to speak and bring peace into the lives of those that we meet. Amen? Amen? God, help me with this this week. I pray that would be your prayer. God, help me with this this week to be long-suffering, to be patient, to be gentle with the people around us because God's been gracious with us. And, And to have beautiful feet uh that's a weird thing um but uh (laughs) but to have people to sense that the coming of our presence to be a beautiful thing because we bring the peace of christ when we come god help us to be those kind of people lord help me to be that kind of person now, oh, we're going to be launching into today, and we'll be here for just the next few weeks. We're going to be, and I think it's kind of a seasonal thing in some ways, we're going to be talking about our game plan in Jesus Christ. Our game plan in Jesus Christ. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about how to be all in, but in, in speaking of a, a game plan, you know, I kind of have in the, in, in the mind the X's and the O's and the gridiron, you know, is kind of on my heart and mind and, and thinking about that just, just a little bit. What, what's our game plan? How do, we, how do we get to the place to where we can be not only victorious in Jesus Christ, but that we, that we can be intentional in the way that we go about seeking to follow after him? Now, I know this will surprise you all a great deal, but I didn't play football um, in, in, in high school. And even before then, uh, now, I've, um, I've been to a few many, too many potluck suppers. Um, but uh, back, back in my uh, childhood days, uh, I wasn't only short, but I was skinny. In fact, it got to the point that uh, one individual, when I was in my middle school years, kind of gave the expression, and it kind of stuck. He called me teeth, hair, and eyeballs. Because that's about all there was to me, you know. I was, when I say thin, I was scrawny. And so I, I didn't play football, but I always kind of wanted to. And mom would never sign the release for me to go into play. She probably saved my life. Um, and, uh, but but I, we used to live just down the street from the school that I went to. I'd walk to school. Um, in the mornings, and um, you know, uphill both ways. And no, nah, I'm just kidding. I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't far at all. In fact, it was kind of a flat thing. But anyway, I, I walked to school, and and so they were in the springtime. They were having some practices and some tryouts, and coaches were working in with the younger age group, some of the new new uh, athletes and students, you know, that might be on the. And so I, I um, you know, I didn't. I just kind of snuck over there and and kind of worked my way in uh, for for two or three times, and uh, had a lot of fun. You know, because again, school was a little bit different uh, back then than it is today. You know, we used to get away with some stuff you can't get away with today. Some of you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, being uh, teeth, hair, and eyeballs, uh, you know, I might have gotten to a little scrap or two. Uh, we, you know, just to prove I was a guy. Uh, you know, we, we, that would happen at school. Now, it's, you know, we didn't. We didn't have some of the great tragedies back then. It was like we have in school today. Most of the time, we'd go out back, and we would uh, solve our differences, if you know what I mean, and it would be over. We'd be best pals, you know, and, and all. But that was, it was a different day and time. I think that's where the original um, participation trophies uh, were given out. Um, you know, some of them, 
some of you call them black eyes. I thought they were awards. But, um, you know, I mean, it was proof I was there, right? You know, yeah, but, but it, was, it, was a, it was a little bit different uh, day and time. And, and so I would, I would sneak off, uh, and I did for that week, you know, uh, to the little spring training camp and all, and, and got in and worked in. And, of course, I hadn't played and didn't know what I was doing. So they put me on defensive end and just told me to go after whoever, you know, I, who I could go after. And, boy, I looked across that line, and, man, you know, I saw some of those guys that pushed me around just a little bit, you know, and I kind of got excited, and, and boy, I was, I was giving it all that I had, and everything went real well until the coaches noticed that I hadn't signed the release forms, and, um, and they called mom. She didn't know I was there, and um, mom was a little bit old school too, amen, <laughs> and, and so uh uh, I didn't get a black eye from her, but it was uh, it got a little warm around back and down lower, if you know what I mean. Uh, I wasn't supposed to be there. But I learned a little bit about what it meant to be all in. Some of you have played athletics, and some of you have been in engagements and in conflicts in your life. And, and uh, those guys, when they line up and they get on the line, you know, sometimes you look across that line, and, and those guys are, are outweighed by even another two people. You know, in the person that they're up against over there. And if they don't go all in, they'll get hurt and hurt badly. you got to get everything you've got sometimes just to survive. You know, it's kind of like the old adage goes, the difference between a, a pig and a, and a chicken at breakfast. You know, the chicken's got an, a, an investment, but the pig is committed. Amen. You know, he's all in. And, and so uh, God has called us. Not simply to make a token investment. But this life is hard. And sometimes we line up against things that we face. If we go at it half-heartedly, we're going to experience defeat. But if we can come together in Christ and go all in, all in in Jesus, the victory is won. I want you to listen to these words that come out of the book of Acts in chapter 2 and verse 36, beginning there. As Peter speaks to those that are being invited fresh and anew into the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. And he spoke these words, or these words were spoken. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. Now in just a moment, we're going to talk about being all in. But to be all in, you got to get in. Amen. Amen. You know, it's 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 uh, there. There's so many have fallen into the trap over the years. Some of us were, you know, we, you know, you you've heard the old thing at the oh, the worn out preacher thing that uh, you know a lot of us had a drug problem early on. You know, we were drugged to church every Sunday. You know, some of us don't remember a time in our lives where we weren't in church. We're not talking about simply that this morning. We're not talking about. Simply coming in and being out in the audience watching from the grand stadium all that's happening there on that field. We're talking about getting engaged. We're talking about being a part of the team of Christ Jesus. And if we're going to be all in, we've got to get in. Amen? There's some that have been attending church their whole lives but that never have trusted Jesus as their personal Savior that don't know the joy, truly know, deep within, of sins forgiven. The love of a father with whom there's no longer anything between us because of Jesus. The fellowship with the people of God. And if you don't have and know that today, if you don't hear anything else this whole series long, I invite you. The Holy Spirit invites you to take a step of faith and trust in Jesus 
to be your all, your savior, your everything. So that you can know the joy of salvation, of sins forgiven, of an eternity provided far with Christ, the hope of all hopes. Don't leave here this day without Jesus in your heart and in your life. The Bible goes on from that place, verse 39 in Acts of chapter, chapter 2 of Acts. It says, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who were afar off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked, other versions say, this perverse generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about three thousand souls now listen to the first part of verse 42 the bible says this and they devoted themselves did you hear that and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers and so here we are today we are called uh, by the all-in father God the Father who gave all, he literally bankrupted heaven. He gave his only, his one and only begotten son is our sacrifice for our sin so that we might have fellowship with a holy God, the sin no longer being between us. So God the Father gave all, and then by the virtue of his son Jesus Christ who gave his all on the cross for us, his very life was given, was spent for you and me. No, No greater love is there than this, than one who lays his life down for his friend. Jesus laid his life down not only for his friends, but for his enemies once for every single man, woman, boy, and girl who ever has, is, or will live. Everyone who has been conceived, his life has been given for them. He gave us all. If there was ever one who was all in, it was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He gave his life for us and has invited us to be all in with him. He's called to make us disciples. What did he tell to, his, uh, to the apostles, his disciples? He says, go and do what? Make disciples. What's the invitation of Christ? Jesus said even to them, follow me. What is a disciple? It is one who follows after Jesus Christ. He says, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. In preparation for this series, because I, I, I had to confess to you, I'm not... Uh, I love to watch football, I do, and I I really do enjoy it, and I know there's a lot of different uh, uh, people here that maybe watch some football games over the weekend. Y'all pray for me and Julie, it's looking bad. Um, Some uh, some of you know we went to Mississippi State, and... um, I'm telling you, they don't have a defense. It looks, it, it's, it's, whew, it looks bad. But, uh, uh, but there's all kinds of different ones around here. You know, the, you know we know the, the maroon thing, and I know there's some crimson, and I know there's some orange and blue, and then there's some, some orange, and we're not going to get into tw- the thing between the oranges and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many different variations and all this stuff. We all, we all kind of like to, you know, in this part of the world, we, we, we have our teams, you know, that we like to root for and, and and, and we like to and we, and we like to follow, but you know, I, I really, I, I really don't know. Uh, like some of you do, everything there is to know about football. You know, I get in some conversations sometimes with with some of these guys, and man, they're quoting stats from from games that I never heard of. You know what I mean? And and talking about, I mean, and so I did a little bit of reading. And, uh, and, I, and I did a little bit of reading about one particular guy, and I learned as I read about him that uh, even though he had one of the most amazing careers as a coach in football, uh, a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people liked him and a lot of people hated him. But one thing he was, was devoted. Uh, so, some of you have, have, have heard the name of this guy. His, his name was uh, Bill Belichick. And, um, you know, he, he, quoted the, he, he coached this little team up in the Northeast. Um, you know, they call the Patriots, and they won a game or two. And so he, he became a big deal. As they told the story about him and about how he got started, uh, 
And some of you remember and maybe know football well enough to know some of the stories and in his coaching career. And he spent some woeful years in the the Browns and and you know in a couple other places. But he he landed he landed there with with New England. And in those first couple of years, wasn't looking good. But then as they wrote about him, they said this. In 2001, it's been one of those years that a few people in, in any profession or experience wouldn't have expected. It was a year when all the negatives became positive. And the starting quarterback, this guy, maybe you've heard of him, uh, Bledsoe, Drew, Drew Bledsoe, he was, he was pretty okay. And, and he got hurt. And then there was his backup quarterback nobody had really heard of and wasn't following too much. And some of you might have heard of him. His name was Tom uh, Brady. And, uh, you know, he evidently was pretty good. Uh, he turned out to even be better. And then there was this game that was won in the latter part of that season, the early part of the playoffs against, uh, against Buffalo, and, and the, and the game wasn't even supposed to, to be a winnable game. There was one of the plays in the game that really uh, was, was, was thought to be a, a turnover, and they, they got down and found the unconscious. It was snowing out there, and the field was, was largely covered in snow, and when they got to the player and they found him, he got knocked, the wide receiver got knocked unconscious but was still clinging to the football. And so... It saved a turnover for them and a fumble that uh, would, have, would have ended the season. Um, it, been, it, 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 was, it was ruled a possession. And it opened the door for a couple of successful tries by a then not quite as well known particular kicker that made two field goals. And won the game. And they made it to the Super Bowl. There were players on that team that year that were has-beens. Forgotten abouts. Wouldn't expect to ever really make very much of themselves. Maybe you've heard of a few of them, a guy named Antoine Smith and Larry Izzo, Larry Patton and Mike Vabrell. You know, he, he not too big of a guy, right, you know? And Mike Compton. Guys, other teams had traded off. They were there. The Patriots were good, but something made the difference. And right there in that game, as they were, as they were being prepared and were coming out in preparation for, for the Super Bowl, the story is told that that particular year in, in Super Bowl 36, they were there somewhere in the deep recesses of that, that grand stadium. And they made a decision. Even in the year before, there were some that come out, and, and I don't know if you've seen some of the preliminaries as the players are come out, and individually, especially the starting players, would be recognized before the crowds, and the crowds would roar and, 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 you know, and, and, and applause, and some of them even made franchise names in the couple of years before. But this time, this particular team made a decision that no one's name would be called. They would be introduced as the New England Patriots. And they came out as one. Later on, one of the Raiders tied in was quoted as saying, I knew that it was over as soon as I saw that. The Patriots in that Super Bowl game were 14-point underdogs. But they came out as one. Bill Belichick had a lot of sayings and did a lot of things, and we, we, you'll hear a few of them over the next few weeks, at least a couple of them in particular. But one of the things that he often preached over and over and over was stay committed to the process, and the results will follow. Stay committed to the process, and the results will follow. Some of you probably know the history pretty well, but there were several other coaches that got their start and, and made their names under his teams. One of them was this little-known guy you probably never heard of uh, named uh, Nick Saban. Any of you ever heard of, of that guy? 
Um, now, he learned from Bill. And Nick made this statement. He said, in your life, your roadmap is knowing that, knowing what you want to accomplish, then committing yourselves to do all the things necessary to reach that destination. You cannot get there without hard work and perseverance. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Now, we know here today as the people of God, we're saved by grace. Amen? There's nothing in and of it ourselves that we can do to become saved. I can't forgive my sins or yours. It's only by Christ, uh, Christ Jesus that our, that our sins can be forgiven. We need the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He is the only way, the way, the truth, and the life. But how many of you know we have a role to play? How many of you know that we have a place in God's game plan? How many of you know that your life is significant to the kingdom of God and to this world in which he pours us out and gives us to? And what's at stake is much more than any old Super Bowl, any old game on a gridiron. Eternity's in the balance. You see, today you and I are invited to be part of the greatest winning team there's ever been. Against all odds, Jesus wins. He wins. Some of you might look today and say, well, you don't know me. I've got a problem. I've got a history. I'm kind of like some of those players that have been written off. Maybe I'm broken down. I don't think that I can get in there. Remember Jesus? He took four fishermen, a tax collector, a thief, a doctor, and a few others, and changed the world. Maybe some of you today have some hurts that are keeping you from being all in, some reservations. Maybe your faith has been challenged. Maybe your trust has been broken down. I remember one particular guy that had been lied about by church leaders, been deserted by his friends at church. He was even betrayed by the church treasurer and killed by the congregation. Some of you remembering him, his name was Jesus. Some of you here today have been church hurt. Probably no worse kind of hurt in many people's lives when those that should love you the most hurt you the deepest. But let me tell you this. Jesus knows what that's like. The one who's given his life for you has been there. And he still says... Come follow me. Amen. If my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could give his all for me, then certainly I can trust him enough to give my all for him. Maybe it's time for a few of us here today to let some old things go. Maybe it's time for some of us here today to allow God to give us the grace to get victory in an area of our life that's been an old pain, an old injury, an old hurt. And trust Jesus to do what we can't do for ourselves. Because we've got a game to win. The good news is the one who made the game plans, not your pastor. It's God the Father who sent his son, our coach, our leader, who knows what it's like to play the game.
but he's already won. How many of you know it's great to play with a winner, amen? When you play with winners, you can become a winner. We're playing with a winner. I pray to God today, you know the joy of salvation. It's so much more than a game. It's your life. Don't leave this place today without trusting Jesus with your life and getting to know him. It's time to go all in. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray today that you would bless us in a special way within this place. And I pray that by the grace that's in your Holy Spirit that you would speak to my heart and to the hearts of those that are here and the hearts of those that may be listening online, Lord Jesus, those things that we need to hear because, Lord, we come to you as those who have, have been broken. Lord, we come to you as those who are, are not capable in and of our own strength, but, Lord, we know that you love us and you gave your life for us and for some reason you still want us to be a part of the family of God. And we're so thankful we're so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing because, Lord, we know that you're leading us to victory. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to catch a glimpse of your grand plan, that you'd help us to buy in to the dream and the promise and the reality that we can win in you, that there can be a victory that's lasting, that can't be taken away, that can't be lied down or betrayed, that can't be robbed of you or of us when we give our all to you because you've given your all just for the prospect of having us to be yours. So, Father, we ask that you would increase our faith and you'd help us to be willing to go all in. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning, and I don't know where you are in your spiritual life, and uh, we, can make, we can make all kinds of presumptions, but this morning, the Holy Spirit, and you know exactly where you are today, and if the Spirit is speaking to your heart, that there's an old hurt that you need to lay down, don't leave here with that baggage, leave it here with the Lord, He's got the grace that is sufficient. And if you don't know Jesus, you don't know that you know that you know, I don't care how long you've been sitting in church, it's time to get out of the crowd and get on the team with Christ and go all in. Trust Him with your life, all of it, and just see what He'll do. You respond to the Lord however he leads you this morning. If you need to come pray for someone or if you need to, to grab someone that's next to you and say, hey, would you pray with me? You do that, and I'll be here for you as well both now and after the service. But respond to the Lord as he leads you. This is your opportunity. Don't miss it.
Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you gave your life for us, that you love us, that you gave your all. And Father, we pray that you'd help us, Lord, to increasingly be those that would be known as those who are fully committed to you, that we're all in, holding nothing back. For Lord, we long for that day to see your victory. We thank you, Lord, for what we've seen even in this past week and the victory that has been won in the lives of those that are coming to you. And Lord Jesus, we pray increasingly that you would help us to grow in your likeness, that we can forevermore reach more people for you, for your glory, that they can know the joy of this salvation. Help us now, Lord, to go in peace and to go with the promise that we are eternally yours. Help us to be a blessing, a light in the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen.